Fourth of July coming up here. Praise God. I thank God for this country. I thank God for the liberties that we have here. Praise His name. It's, you know, I, so many people, I, I hope that tomorrow you'll spend some time just celebrating the fact that we live in a nation where we have freedoms that other people in this world don't have necessarily. And, and so that we can just rejoice in the fact that you know, this is what God has, has given to us. But this morning I want us to turn to Galatians chapter 5 and, and starting in this, verse 13. Galatians 5 verse 13. That's where I want to be. And so if you're there with me, you can move there with me. It says for this, I wish or you were indeed called to be free, brothers and sisters. Don't turn this freedom into an excuse for your corrupt nature to express itself. Rather, to serve each other through love. Okay, that verse right there is what we're talking about. There's other verses we, that we read are verses that tell us what it's like to live with the, the nature of, the, of our flesh and of the world and what it's like to live with the nature of the Holy Spirit guiding us. But we have been called into freedom. In the King James it says, you've been called into liberty. And this morning I want to talk to you about those things. You know, here in this country we're about to celebrate our freedoms and our liberties. We, and and if, if you have not yet done so, I would, I would encourage you to read the Declaration of Independence and the Constitution of the United States. Neither one of those are very long, and both, but both of those indicate to, to us what it was that our forefathers had in mind when they broke free from the bondage of England as colonies and then provided for a law, a, a, a process of law and a process of government that we now live under. And I say all of that because I want you to understand something and I think it's very important that we come to this conclusion. Freedom is a concept, it is not a reality. Freedom is a concept, it is not a reality. Now I'm going to explain that for a sec in a second. Let's just say you have you have a horse that's in a corral. It's got these. It's it's, it's it cannot get outside the, the fence of the corral. And you would say, and that horse is constantly looking over the fence and looking out at the pastures out beyond, and it wants to be free. And then one day. The horse gets out of the corral. Somebody leaves the gate open, and it goes out running into the pastures. And it thinks, I'm free, I'm free, and it kicks up its feet, and it goes running through the pastures. And then it comes up against a canyon wall. And at that point, as it rises, as it comes to the canyon wall, it realizes, or if it had, if it had the sense, uh, it would realize that its, its freedom has its limitations. Freedom has its limitations. It was free from the corral, but it is not free to go any place that it wants to go. Because freedoms are freedom is a is a concept. It is not a reality. We live here in the United States and we consider ourselves free. But if we read our our Constitution and we read the laws, know the laws that are around us, we know that all of our freedoms have, have limitations to them. All of our freedoms stop when they start infringing upon the freedoms of other people. So, I have, and as, as I was taught as a, as a young person, I have the freedom to wave my arms all around. I can do whatever I want with them. I'm free. Hallelujah. But the moment someone else's face comes in, within the range of where my arm is moving, I lose that freedom. Because if I were to strike another individual, I would be a lawbreaker and my freedom would end. We have, we have laws that, that direct us in the natural. You know, sometimes we're like the, the little lamb who is in, the, in a pen. And that little lamb is in there bleeding and dying and it's also wanting to get out and eat the go into the clover fields and eat the clover. It's out there. And sometimes, you know, the, the, the lamb is just, all, all I can think about is I, I see the clover fields and I want to go to the clover fields. And one day, 
Somehow the lamb is able to squeeze between the rails of the fence that's there and gets into the clover field and thinks, I'm free. I can do what I want to do. I have all of this goodness out here around me until the mountain lion comes along. And then it longs to be back inside the pen where it was, where it was safe. What we consider freedom very often is, is not freedom at all. Freedom in itself is, is a state of mind. And the question I have now is, what is it that you want to do or be that you think you cannot do or be in, within yourself? Here in our country, we have the opportunities to, to grow, to get educated, to try out new things, to take different types of jobs if it's within you know, our ability. But once again, our freedom to do those things is limited by, first of all, our abilities, by our education, by the opportunities that are given to us. We can't just go out and do anything. I can't go out today, jump into a 747 and go for, you know, take it for a ride. I don't have the knowledge, nor do I have the ability, nor do I have the opportunity to do those things. So my freedoms have limitations to them. But within Christ, a lot of those limitations dissolve away. We said that we have been called unto liberty. Liberty, liberty is, is the right that is given to us to pursue our freedoms. Sometimes we get the two, you know, as though they were the same thing. Freedom, freedom is that state of mind which says, I can do and be what I want to be. Liberty is the right that we're given to go pursue that. So here in this United States of America, we have been given liberties as well as freedoms. Was it Patrick Henry who said, give me liberty or give me death? As he was preparing to, to fight a war, to, re, to get away from the, the tyranny of a, of a, a government a, on the other side of the ocean. But even at that, when, when, the, when the Revolutionary War was, was fought and it was won, then it became necessary to set the boundaries of the freedoms of this nation. And so you have the Constitution, which set up the form of government that we had. And it says that the Congress and the Senate were given the, the rights to make laws. Now the laws that they make were boundaries. They are the, they are the, the canyon walls and the, and the precipices that stop us from just running wild. They are, the, they are the, the fences that are put around that keep us from going beyond our, uh, our limitations. They are the, the, the things which protect us from... Wow, the wilds of, of the rest of the world that keep the Hitlers and Mussolinis out of our country. So they were given the right to make the laws. And those laws protect you in your home. And they protect you on the streets. And they protect you in your place of business. Those laws were set up not to hinder you, but to, to allow you to live with peace and joy within the limitations of of what the law says. That's what Congress and Senate was set properly. And then it was given to the Supreme Court to judge as to whether or not things that were being done, laws that were being passed, and, and things that people were doing fit within the limitations of the Constitution which had been written. That's why just recently we've had all of this uh, turmoil uh, based upon the first and the second amendments of our Constitution. And there's a lot of misunderstanding about these things. You know, when we misunderstand what our freedoms are, we, we misunderstand what society is all about. There has never been given within the laws of this land the right to destroy any other life. Period. And every life, all men are created equal. Every life is sacred. And it's never been given. So anyone who, who takes another life is working outside of the laws that have governing our nation. 
On the other hand, the Bible, uh, the Constitution says that that it is the government has its own limitations, and the government cannot infringe upon the. The, the free practice of a religion, nor can it promote a particular religion above others. And it cannot stop people from saying what's on their mind. As long as what they're saying is not going to cause some kind of a harm to other people. It's just like waving your arms around. So, the laws that this land have been set upon, or have been set, have been set for this this country, are there for our protection, and there for our peace, and there for our joy. And the laws of God are the same. He says, in, and we just read in, in Ephesians chapter five and verse thirteen, that we have been given a liberty, we've been given a freedom to exercise our our liberties that God has given to us. But even those those Freedoms and those liberties have limitations to them. I do not have the right to make other people believe what I believe. I have the right to tell them what I believe. And I have the right to encourage them to seek the truth. See, with our liberties in Christ, we have been... Freed from number one, and this is what we need to understand about our liberties in Christ. We have been freed from the bondages of sin. I have been freed from the bondages of sin. Just like in our American Revolution, we were freed from the bondages of England. We've been freed. Sin no longer has dominion over me because of the the freedom that I have been given through the blood of Jesus Christ and the presence of the Holy Spirit who is there letting me know whether or not I am walking within the constitution of the Bible telling me that this is not within the realm of what God has called you to do and called you to be so that I can keep that freedom that was given to me by the blood of Christ in obedience to the Lord. Just like our freedoms here in the United States are not just a blanket that goes out over everybody and says, okay, you can do whatever you want to do. It doesn't make any difference. You're a citizen of this country. And so nobody's going to be able to do anything against you. We know that that's not true. And being the citizen or being freed from the bondages of sin in my life does not, is not just a blanket that's thrown out over everybody who, who knows Jesus Christ as, as the Savior and says, okay, you can do whatever you want to do. It doesn't matter. You're, you're washed in the blood and you're saved and, and go ahead and, and just do what you want to do. It's not that way either. See, the Bible gives us guidelines. Truth sets us free. In John chapter 8, verse 32, it says, we shall know the truth. When the Holy Spirit comes into us, we shall know the truth and the truth will set us free. Well, what does that mean? Does that mean we're, I'm free to do whatever I want? Absolutely not. What it means is I am free from being captivated by the, the sinful nature that has been in me since Adam and Eve. I am free to be free from being bound by, by Satan and the demons of hell. I am, I am free from those things so that I can make my choices based upon what I know to be truth and not based upon what I think is okay. When I think about freedom, I need to decide what is the best thing for me. See, freedom gives me the, the ability to make decisions as to whether or not I'm going to live within the bounds of that freedom is given, or I'm going to step beyond those bounds. Now, how do I, how do I know whether I'm living within the bounds or I'm stepping beyond? It's by the peace and the joy that the Holy Spirit places in our hearts. When we have the peace of Jesus Christ, when we recognize the power of His love, when, when we come to that place in our lives where 
where we're not overcome and, and not overwhelmed by the things that go on in the world around us because we know that we know that we know that Jesus is in complete control and he is watching out for me and he is protecting me and it is by his his arms by his power by his strength that the enemies of life are kept in, in at bay see when we recognize that it is not by that it is not by might nor by power that these mountains of problems that come before us are removed, but it is by the Holy Spirit that they're removed. How does that happen? You know, we sometimes think, well, we can just go around telling mountains to get lost. You know, mountain move, you're in my way. Get, get it that way. No, that's not what he's saying. But he's saying the power that that mountain has over you to stop you dead in your tracks or to hinder you from doing what you want to do is gone because I will give you the power and the authority to do it. Philippians 4.13 says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. If you read that in its context, Paul was saying this, I have faced all kinds of mountains. I've gone through all kinds of valleys. I have faced opposition on every side, but you know what? I can be successful. I can be victorious in everything because it is God who is bringing me through. It is the power of the Holy Spirit that is bringing me through. It is not by might nor by power, but it is by the Holy Spirit that these mountains are removed. So many times we think that it's by power, by might. When we misunderstand what freedom is all about, then we try to exert our own strength. In the nation, you know, people just get up and they, and they stand up and scream and they, and they march and they protest and they go, this is within my rights. Number one, those people have not yet read the, the Bill of Rights because the things that they're standing up and shouting about are not there. And they make up their own rules. And they say, okay, everybody has to live by my rules. But when they go down to that guideline that has been set down for us by the called the Constitution of the United States of America, they will find out that what they are demanding is not covered within that boundary. And that's what the Supreme Court is there for. To say to them, you know what? What you're demanding is not covered here. You don't have that right. That right was never given to you. You assumed you had it, but you don't. It's not there. And within the Christian walk, there are a lot of times when we think, well, I can do anything that I want to do, and I'll just tell God, hey, God, I'm doing this in your name. Make it right. And God is saying, whoa, wait a minute. That is not within the boundaries of the law, the Constitution that I wrote down for you in the Bible. I didn't say that you could do that. That wasn't, part of the, that wasn't part of the Constitution that I wrote out for you. I told you, if you keep my commands, you obey my precepts and my concepts, if you make my word the law of your life, if you trust in my Son, Jesus Christ, if you put your life before Him, as it says in Romans chapter 12, lay your life be your brothers, I beseech you that you present your bodies as living sacrifices unto the Lord, wholly acceptable unto Him. He said, this is what I'm calling you to do. Then, he says, don't be conformed to this world, but be, con but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. In other words, let the, let the grace of God have its way in you. The grace of God is what changes the way you think and the way you act. It's, it's, where, it's where faith comes in. When I, God's grace is there changing me, talking to me, moving me, changing my circumstances, making me understand things that I did not understand. He guides me. It's the divine touch of God upon the heart of man and the resultant changes in his life. When I start to understand that my freedoms is a freedom from those things that bound me and those things that kept me captive and those things that were dragging me into the pits of hell, the freedom from that, but not just freedom to do whatever I want to do. It's a freedom to receive from God 
His Holy Spirit and His guidance and His grace, which, which changes and helps me to change, and His Word and the truth that is there and the promises that He has given to all those who will keep His commands. It's a, it's a freedom to receive God's blessings, God's goodness. It's not just a freedom to do what I want to do. Just like the Constitution here in this country, if we live according to the laws of this land, we have the freedoms to, to enjoy all of the blessings of this country. We have the military protecting us. We have the police protecting us. We have the government out there fixing the potholes on the road. We, we, have, we have all kinds of, of, of things within, within our, our governmental system that are there to watch over us, to keep us safe from attacks from outside, to set boundaries on people who would, who would want to come in and, and make changes. We have the liberty to receive and, and live within those blessings because we have the freedom of this land. And it's the same with our Christianity. We have the freedom to live within the blessings and the joys of Christ. The kingdom of God is, ours, is offered to us. The hope of eternal life is offered to us. That joy that is unspeakable and full of glory is offered to us. That peace that surpasses all understanding, that we're in the midst of a, of a turmoil, a great catastrophe in our life, and, and the Holy Spirit comes and He says, just be still and let the Lord have His way. It's going to be all right. And, our, and the calmness comes over us. And we begin to understand that our God truly does love us. That's our freedoms. That's our freedoms. Let's not get our freedoms mixed up with our wants. Because many times our wants are desires. Paul said this. He said the things that I really, really want, those things that I think are really important, sometimes he says I just miss them. He said those things that I know are not good for me, those things that I just don't want to, he said I find myself being drawn into them. He said how can I get saved from this? He said oh I thank God through Jesus Christ. See, when I present my body unto the Lord as a living sacrifice, that's not a, that's not a lack of freedom. That's an acceptance of freedom. I'm saying to the Lord, here I am, God. I'm going, I, I want to know truth and I want to live in truth and I want to find the better life. I want to be under your protection. Like the little lamb who's inside the, inside the pen and seeing the clover fields out there saying, you know, I, I see the clover fields out there. They look really good. But you know what? This farmer who comes and he feeds me every day and makes sure that I have clean water every day. He's taking care of me. And I am uh, I'm much better off here than out there with the wolves. See, we're much better off within the bounds of our faith than we are out there with those demonic wolves that are going to show us clover fields and places to run only to find out that, that those things take the protection away. And all of a sudden we are fighting off these wolves who are out to destroy us who are out to drag us into the pit. We have, we have freedoms in Christ. He says, don't turn the freedom into an excuse for your corrupt nature. Don't turn the freedom into an excuse for your corrupt nature. Folks, the liberties we have in Christ are not so that I can satisfy all of the lustful desires of my life. There are some people out there that are telling you exactly that that's what it's for. You can have all the money, and you can have all the power, and you can have all the fame, and you can have all of this, because that's what God wants for you. Well, unless God told you that that's what He wants for you, it's not what He wants for you. See, the freedom we have in Christ is not, the freedom we have in Christ is not so that I can just allow all of my lustful desires, my worldly, my worldly wants to come to me because now I am free to receive all of that stuff. 
any more than it is for the lamb who wants the clover field. See, we, we live within the bounds, again, the bounds of God's liberty. That freedom that I have, he says, he says, don't let it express itself in the, in the excuses for your corrupt nature to, or don't let it, don't let the corrupt nature express itself because of liberty. He says, but rather do this. Take the love of God that he's given to you. Take the love that God has given to you. Paul says, I just wish you understood how big, how great the love is that God gave to you. And if you could just understand how much God loves you. He says, I want you to take that love and serve other people with it. What's that mean? That means everything that God has put in your hands, everything, your abilities, your life, your finances, your, your family, every, and let them be used to, to enlarge the kingdom of God, to help our brothers and sisters in Christ. If we all did that, if we go back into the book of, of Acts and we see what happened there with the first church, we can understand exactly what it was that, that God was calling us to do. He said when that first church was formed, that those who had extra lands and houses sold them and they brought it in to the store, the money into the storehouse so that everybody there had enough. See, we, we have gone from, let's just use what God has given to us so that everybody is taken care of, to I want to get everything that I can get and it doesn't make any difference with my brother or sister's lacking. If they don't have it, it's because they don't have faith. I got faith, so I'm going to go out and get it. No, see, we've gone from what God or God formed the church as to what it has become today, which is a household of greedy, lying, selfish people. We, we just need not to use the liberty that God gave us for an occasion of, of the flesh, but rather to, by love to serve one another. Jesus said that we are to love one another the way He has loved us. Jesus laid everything aside, put His life on the line, gave up His life for you and for me. He says, now, this is the way I want you to love each other. Use the freedom that you have now. So you're, you're free from the need to worry about how much money is in your bank and, and how big your house is. And, and you're free from the need to look good to your, to your neighbors and the need to have the, you know, be in style with all of your clothes. You're free from all of that stuff. You're free from trying to impress people with your greatness. You're free from that and you can just live your lives as a blessing to bless others with what Christ has done for you. We are here to bless one another. So let us, let us use the liberty that we have to be a blessing, to reach out to those who are in need. And, and, and I want to draw a little line here those who are in need within the body of Christ first. So often we want to reach out to those in need out there who are refusing Christ and those who are right there sitting next to us in the church pew, living right next door to us, we're neglecting them. The first church, when they got together, those who had extras sold it, brought the money in so that everybody, he says, nobody lacked. And then, you know what they did? Then they got together every day in, a, in, in their houses and they just worshiped God and they, and they thanked God for the blessings that He gave and they lived within the liberty and they did not have to worry about how they were going to get through to the next day because God was there with them. They knew the very presence of God. And yes, the, the, the government and, and the uh, society around them came in against them. And they struggled and they suffered some. 
But by that time, the church had expanded. And so the expanded church brought back into those who were struggling and suffering. Because they were living, using their freedom to bless others. All of us have that liberty. And we need to understand that liberty and freedom have their limits. And it, it doesn't mean that I can just do whatever I want to do, whenever I want to do it, wherever I want to do it. It doesn't mean that at all. Some people have that false concept of what freedom is. It doesn't work. And when people get the wrong idea of what freedom is, what do we find? We find chaos in the streets. When people get the wrong idea about what, what freedom is, what do we find? We find a church that is more, more interested in how much money is coming in and how big the buildings are that they can build and how many TV stations they can be on than they are in making sure that each person there is satisfied with the knowledge of God's love and has the peace of His presence. The purpose of the church was to encourage each other to live their lives for Christ with the understanding that every good and perfect gift comes from above, that God has given to us everything we need for this life and for godliness, that, that what we can do anything that God wants us to do because He's strengthening us, and that the weapons of our warfare against what's going on out there in the world are not guns and rockets and airplanes. It's simply the power of the Holy Spirit at work. Can you imagine what it would be like if the entire church, the, the whole universal body of Christ, were so wrapped up in the power of God and they were so dependent upon the presence of the Holy Spirit that when a war broke out, those people would just gather together and they would... Pray, and the power of God would put a shield over that area and the enemy would not be able to enter. It happens, it's happened in the Bible. Where the army sat outside of Jerusalem, the people inside were praying. And the armies were ready, they were perfectly capable of attacking and taking over the city. And God worked out the circumstances to destroy that outside army and, and let Jerusalem go free. Why? Was it because Jerusalem had a great army? Were they, were they shooting rockets from the walls? No. It's because the king and the people had turned to God. Can you imagine if all of the church recognized that our liberty, our liberty is to put all of our faith and hope in Christ and understand that it is only through Him that the enemies of our faith and the enemies of our lives can be destroyed. That's it. Are you saying, Pastor, that there's no need for armies? I'm not saying that at all. Not at all, because sometimes God just says, go get them, boys. And sometimes He says, sit tight and let me show you what I can do. But we be, need to be able to understand the difference. We need to be able to hear what God is saying so that the liberties and the freedoms that we have, we use within the limits that He has given to us. God is good. God loves you. God is going to change things. In the end, God is going to take over. He's going to destroy the wicked. He's going to cleanse the church. He is going to open the windows of heaven and pour out the blessing so much that we can't, can't receive it all. In the end, God is going to bless those who are living within the limits of the freedom that He's given. Only to those who are living within the limits of the freedom that He's given. So today, let's celebrate our freedom. We can celebrate the freedom of our nation as they declared independence from England. And we can celebrate the freedom of our souls as we declared independence from the power of sin and death. Because we have been freed from the law of sin and death and now live within the law of grace and love. But both have a law. But we've been freed from the law of sin and death so that we can live within the law of grace and love.
and the law of grace and love is for our good. Father, we thank you so much for the blood of Jesus Christ who washed away our sins. And we thank you, Lord God, for the indwelling Holy Spirit who guides us and leads us into truth. And we thank you, Lord God, for your word, which is that truth. And we thank you, Father, that that truth is good for correcting us and instructing us, for rebuking us, for giving to us a new way of life. I thank you, Lord God, that your, hope, that your grace and mercy come upon us and help us to make that decision to change the way we think and the way we act. Because, Lord, you said without repentance there is no forgiveness. So, Lord, we just thank you. We thank you, God, that you've given to us the freedom to not be bound by those bad habits, by those lusts, we don't have to look around us and feel bad because somebody has something we don't have. Because we know that we have something that the world will never receive. The eternal glory of your heavenly kingdom. So Lord, keep us within your care. Hold us close, we pray. We give all praise to you. Amen. And now may the grace of God be with you. May His Holy Spirit empower you. May His Word God be as a guide to you. May you be found in all righteousness when Christ returns. Amen. Amen. God bless each one of you. It's good to have you with us today. May God's blessings be upon you. Bye-bye.